Good afternoon. I am Will Thasier. Today is the fourth Sunday in Ordinary Time. At this time, if you have a cell phone, please silence it or turn it off. If during the liturgy, children need to use the restroom, we ask that they be accompanied by an adult. We extend a warm welcome to those of you who are visitors. The celebrant for this Mass will be Father Vaughn. In this gathering, we've, asked, we've been asked to remember Walter Lambert and Norman Provencial. Please wear your, ma your mask during Mass, except when you receive communion. At the entrances of the church, you will find collection baskets for our church offerings. Please place your offertory in the baskets on your way out of Mass. Thank you. Please stand. Save us, O Lord our God, and gather us from the nations to give thanks to your holy name and make it our glory to praise you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd, leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to all of the people, saying, A prophet like me will the Lord, your God, raise up for you from among your own kin. To him you shall listen. This is exactly what you requested of the Lord, your God, at Horeb on the day of the assembly, when you said, Let us not again hear the voice of the Lord, our God, nor see this great fire any more, lest we die. And the Lord said to me, this was well said, I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their kin, 
and will put my words into his mouth. He shall tell them all that I command him. Whosoever will not listen to my words, which he speaks in my name, I myself will make him answer for it. But if a prophet presumes to speak in my name an oracle that I have not commanded him to speak or speak in the name of other gods, he shall die. The word of the Lord. Today you would hear his voice. Harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as in the day of Massah in the desert, where your fathers tempted me. They tested me, though they had seen my works. If today. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I should like you to be free of anxieties. An unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But a married man is anxious about the things of the world, how he may please his wife, and he is divided. An unmarried woman or a virgin is anxious about the things of the Lord, so that she may be holy in both body and spirit. A married woman, on the other hand, is anxious about the things of the world, how she may please her husband. I am telling you this for your own benefit, not to impose a restraint upon you, but for the sake of propriety and adherence to the Lord without distraction. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Then they came to Capernaum, and on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. The people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. In their synagogue was a man with an unclean spirit. He cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Quiet, come out of him. The unclean spirit convulsed him, and with a loud cry came out of him. All were amazed and asked one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. His fame spread everywhere throughout the whole region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. When we look at the gospel message, the overall gospel message reminder is that first, we were made by Almighty God with a purpose. But uh, that purpose of union with God for eternity got spoiled by sin. We allowed evil into our lives. But Jesus, our God, came into our humanity and overcame the power of sin. Now, we have the choice to choose or reject that grace that God gives us and then to be immersed in the life of God through the sacraments, through the church, through so many other ways in our lives. And in the gospel today, we hear about that incarnation of evil because you realize evil is not just an amorphous, Thing out there. Evil is personal. Evil is real. We hear about this man with an unclean spirit that Jesus drives out. That's not just, you know, Jesus was confused. There really are demons. There really are angels and demons out there. And demons are simply the angels, those purely spiritual beings that chose to reject God. And now for all eternity, they are rejecting God. And because they reject God, they hate us, and they want us, really, they, they, they want us to be separated from God forever. But as much as we sometimes will go along with them, Jesus came to set us free. Now, that being said, There's never the excuse, well, the devil made me do it. We always have free will. We always have that free choice. We can't just say, well, we're going to throw off all of our blame and say, well, the devil made me do it. No, no. He can influence, he can push, but he can't overcome. We have that choice. Now, the image that I see as I read through this gospel today is there what it says in their synagogue was a man with an unclean spirit and i wonder if this man has been coming to synagogue every sabbath and nobody even noticed that this man had an unclean spirit oh yeah he would gossip a little bit more about the people or he might become a, a more of a division and, and subtly in in the congregation but nobody really noticed until jesus came And he taught with authority. And in that teaching with authority, he challenged something in this man. And that spirit was touched. And he reacted, let's say, he reacted poorly. What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. He starts then reacting against this teaching of Jesus. What are those things 
that we allow evil to have their way in our lives. What are those areas of demonic influence? Now, we don't always think a bit about it as demonic. We might not think, well, there's this, this devil that's on me. But you know, you know those things where you're struggling to overcome them and you never seem to be able to. You know those areas of your life, maybe, as I mentioned earlier, is an area of gossip where you know, I know I shouldn't be gossiping. But it's something you just never seem to be able to overcome. You never are able to conquer it. Maybe it's an area of addiction. Now, when I talk about addictions, a lot of times, what do our minds go to automatically? Alcohol or drugs. Of course, those are addictions, and they have powerful addictions in our lives. But not all of our addictions are from uh, external stimuli in terms of what we're putting into our body. Although something like food or sugar can also be an addiction. But sometimes shopping can be an addiction. And nowadays, online shopping. Sometimes uh, gaming or our electronics can be a, an addiction. Sometimes pornography can be an addiction. What are these things which, which we can't seem to overcome in our lives? You see, the good news is that Jesus came into our humanity. He walked our walk. He talked our talk. He lived our life. And then he died our death and then rose to new and everlasting life to overcome these things, to bring us redemption, to, to break the power of that darkness in our lives so that we could have new life. And so when we look at the darkness in our lives, maybe specifically surrounded this whole COVID situation, we can say, but Jesus has conquered this. But that question is then, do we turn our lives and surrender to him? Do we want him to conquer? You know, I look out here and no offense, but this isn't so much the generation that's been addicted to the devices, right? But we know people that are. And maybe some of us are as well. But we look and we see this is, this is a time in our culture, and now with COVID as it is, we're even forced to go in front of our screens, whether large or small, more and more and more. And that can be addictive. That can break us and our spirits from what we were meant to be, who we were meant to be. And I'm going to encourage you, if, if you think, and maybe even if you don't think, that you spend too much time on those devices, you know, Lent is coming up. Maybe for Lent, we could give up everything that we don't have to, we don't have to do for school, for work, and maybe those things that are specifically helping us to grow in holiness, like, as I've said before, the Bible in a Year podcast, which is helping us to grow closer to Almighty God. But any of that extra stuff, maybe we could give that up, the social media and maybe some other things. Because when we say yes, to these addictions, a lot of times it's like, I like this. I don't want Jesus to come and redeem me from this. I like these things that I do. Jesus says, well, I, I want to bring you true freedom. I want to set you free. But I won't set you free without you choosing to be set free. And that then brings me to this next point. How do we react when Jesus challenges us out of our mediocrity? We hear this man, he's probably been sitting in the synagogue every Sabbath for who knows how many years. But then Jesus comes and he speaks with authority and he challenges out of their mediocrity. 
What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I like the way I live. What are you asking me to do? I don't think this is good, Jesus. What are you saying to me? And that can be our reaction. When the church teaching comes out and we're like, no, no, that's not the way I live. Oh, that's just foolish. That's not the way the world thinks. That's right. It isn't the way the world thinks. It's the way God thinks. And God knows how we were made, for what we were made, that we were made for him, for union with him, for love of him. And too often we settle. And so he comes to take us out of our mediocrity. But very often we don't want to be pulled out of our mediocrity. And again, that can be the whispering of the evil one trying to keep us from becoming the great saints that God made us to be. So the hard word today is that a lot of times Satan has some sort of a clawing and a scratching in our lives. Some area that we just can't seem to overcome, and sometimes we don't want to overcome. But the good news is, Jesus has overcome. Jesus has conquered sin and death. Jesus has conquered the power of addiction in our lives. Jesus has conquered the power of death. Jesus has even conquered COVID. The question is, Will we throw ourselves into his arms in trust, in love, and say, Jesus, I want you to transform me. I want you to set me free. I want you to set me free from thinking everything is out to get me. I want you to set me free from these addictions. I want you to set me free from this division and this this hatred, this rebellion that's in my life. I, I want you to set me free from... The chromatural, whatever it is that's within us, that's a technical term, by the way. The thing that makes me a curmudgeon, Lord, set me free. Because I don't like it. I don't like how this is leading me away from love. And Jesus, in his mercy, in his grace, comes and he redeems us when we surrender to him. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In today's first reading, we heard God respond to the people's cries with the promise of a prophet who would fulfill their longings, the one whom we recognize as Jesus Christ. In his name, we now cry out to God with our need. For the church, that by what we say and what we do, we may teach what we believe and witness how it changes our lives, so that we may bear witness to the saving power of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those in authority may work toward bringing justice to all who are oppressed and peace to all who live in fear, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For teachers, administrators, and staff in Catholic schools, that they may see each of their students as a child of God and be placed in their efforts to form each one into a person who will live out the values of our shared faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our hearts may be fertile so that when we hear God's word, it may germinate and bear fruit, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those discerning a vocation to the priesthood, diaconate, consecrated life, or marriage, that the Lord guide their hearts and make his will clear for their lives, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of John Walter Stanovich and Albert Saraceno and all who have died recently, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of Walter Lambert and Norma, Norman Provencial, and for all our beloved deceased, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers of this assembly and for all the prayers written in our parish book of intercessions, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Generous God, throughout human history, you have blessed us with your gifts. Listen to our prayers and grant our needs through your greatest gift of all, your Son and our Savior, Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Transform our lives anew. Transform our lives brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. 
And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. Oh, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. (laughs) Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the meek, for they shall possess the land.
Take the body and the blood, give him freely out of love. Do this in memory of me. Do this in memory of me. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will not hunger again. I am the bread of life. No one can come to me unless the Father draws them near to him. Take the living bread of life. Take the cup of sacrifice, do this in memory of me. Take the body and the blood, give him freely out of love, do this in memory of me. Do this in memory of me. Do this in memory of me. Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a reminder, please leave your kneeler down as you're leaving your pews so we know where to uh, sanitize. This Friday is First Friday and Saturday is First Saturday. As such, we have an 8 a.m. Mass on both of those days. Also, this Friday, February 5th, I'll be offering a Mass of Healing and Hope at 7 p.m. So if you or someone you love is in need of healing in body, mind, spirit, soul, relationships, or in any other way, come and experience God's healing power through this Healing Mass. Again, that's this Friday at 7 p.m. Uh, last but not least, uh, normally this weekend we would be doing, you know, the crossing of uh, candles over everyone's throats because it's uh, closest weekend to the Feast of St. Blaise. Uh, however, with p- proper COVID precautions, uh, we will not be doing that. However, uh, we will be doing a blessing over all of you. Uh, and we know that through the intercession of St. Blaise, Bishop and Martyr, even if you don't get those candles crossed over your throats, God is still working through 
uh, this for healing. So today, as we prepare to celebrate the Feast of St. Blaise, who was a bishop of Sebast in Armenia in the 4th century, before being martyred, he is said to have healed a boy who was choking. And since the 8th century, St. Blaise has been venerated as the patron of those who suffer from diseases of the throat. We pray in a special way today for protection from afflictions of the throat and from other illnesses, especially (laughs) COVID-19. The blessing of St. Blaise is a sign of our faith in God's protection and love for us and for the sick. So we pray through the intercession of St. Blaise, Bishop and Martyr, may God deliver you from every disease of the throat and from every other illness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And for those of you watching on TV or maybe on some Facebook or other such things, that blessing went through as well. (laughs) The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. The prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the other evil spirits who prowl about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen.